Yeah. There's nothing to do. Yeah, I'm pretty bored. You know what we should do? What? You want to make a movie? You want to you want you want you want to make a movie? Yeah. Okay. What's your in comedy or well, like um like what if we made like an action movie or something? Oh, you know my dad's got a gun. That would totally work. Yeah, because action movies have guns in them. Right. Cool. Oh man, let me see that. Yeah, no, bam, don't. bam, bam, bam. Dude, be careful. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Dude, bam. Dude. Be careful. So he called me up. And he said to me, Ian, it'll be Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Only Snow White and the Six Dwarves. Because the seventh one lost a foot to diabetes or something. We're throwing ideas back and forth. Mike was very unprofessional about the entire thing. He was just—he was really excited to take the project on. I was just looking forward to it, I guess. I think that he couldn't have been more ecstatic. I fell out of my bed. I chose editor Jay Cub because I think he had a lot of good—he had a lot of good work. Editing Mike's script was an experience. When Mike first came to me with the script, I thought it had the heart of my dog Skip and the smiles of a land before time. So I financed the movie, um, and I only paid for about two of the 108 days that it was um, on because... Actually, the funding of the film was very successful. Um, people were just throwing money at us. Well, I'm... I'd rather not talk about it. Um, um, if we were in New Orleans, like what happened there, except without water, it was with money. I shot the sheriff. The costume girl. I'm like, you know what, if these costumes are gonna be like... So I drew up the costumes, and I handed in the costumes, and I said, what do you think of these costumes? And they were like, these are great costumes. <laughs> and I was like, I know, I draw up great costumes. The guy that did the costumes for Cats, the the musical, which, like, I don't even know what the musical's about, but, like, the, the costumes are just like, are, are those people? Are those cats up there? They said, those just aren't the costumes that we're looking for. And I said, those just aren't the costumes that you're looking for. The costumes that people are looking for are the costumes that I draw up. So anyway, they handed me over what they wanted to be the costumes. And they were a pile of brown rags. And I said, brown rags for costumes? Those aren't costumes. And they said, please, we just need some costumes. Like, what can the musical possibly be about? How can a, 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 a musical called Cats be snowballed in any way and have it mean something? What story can be around a story of cats? Like, are all the cats put into a pillowcase and then they throw a dog in there? Like, what? It, that's all I can really envision. But I did not shoot the deputy. So we were doing the fight on the mountain? On our way to Mount Everest, we were up in the helicopter flying to Mount Everest to the top, and the guy, Ben, who was going to play the other guy with Ian in the fight scene, he, um, he, he went into cardiac arrest on our, because of the latitude or something, or the longitude, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, so. Uh, oh God, who's going to replace him? The best. Mike Capra. So we get there on top of Mount Everest and we realize that um, there's, there's some problems up there. There was some issues. Um. <laughs> We were doing, we were doing the fight, and then all of a sudden, I... So he punched me in the face. For reals. <coughs> ah! Oh, shit! Are you oh. okay, man? Uh, cut, cut. Guys, why is there a park in the to top of the mountain? This is ridiculous. Uh. We should probably film somewhere else. Uh. Yeah, we should. <sighs> um, when I saw the CEO, I turned in the script, I said, here, here you go. This is what you are going to be a part of. It's it's going to be not only fantastic, but it's also going to be fantastic. 
I was prepared for a thrilling conclusion, so I turned to Act 2, and in the top right corner, there was a little smidgen of earwax. Can you believe that? I scratched at it vigorously for 15 minutes trying to clear the page of any impurities, when then I realized the whole page was just a bunch of Bazooka Joe comics scotch taped together. I told him that everything with the CEO guy went very well. Mike said the CEO loved it. Oh, Ian Hamilton's costume? Oh god, don't even get me started. This kid was ridiculous, trying to measure him while he ate deli sandwiches. When he first came into my office, and I asked him to sit down for the meeting, he sprawled out on the floor. So my number one question is, who's going to be my Snow White? So I think I need someone with class, someone who's attractive, and someone who's sassy. And I think of one person, Helen Keller. So I yell upstairs and I say, get me Helen Keller on the phone. And I think of three things. She can't hear me on the phone. She's dead. And I live by myself. I just stared at him blankly across my fine oak desk. He was just yapping about his film and I could hardly take him seriously wearing his I'm with stupid shirt. Is he some sort of prepubescent seventh grader? Um, you can't get a better written picture and you can't get a better filmed picture. Novelties aren't funny. Wow, I've got Martin Lawrence in my office. Mel Blanc in a wedding dress. I shook his hand and we came to a compromise that I'd let him shoot the movie as long as he had last train to Clarksville by the monkeys and the ending credits. He just, he, um, he edited, um, that one movie when the guy um, put on the red socks. I love the monkeys. Even though they didn't play their own instruments, they made those Beatles look like a bunch of chimps. Nah. So I walk in to measure Ian Hamilton, and he's blasting at 7 o'clock in the morning a mini disc single of It's Raining Men. I have driven down Penny Lane, though. It's marvelous. Beautiful, like my mother's eyes. And when it gets to the part, I'm going to go out and get soaking wet, he stands up on a chair and says, I love this part. I grew up in Kentucky. He would spell words backwards, like level and race car. He was very pleased. It's ridiculous. He loved my work. He said he couldn't believe how, how smart I was. Or not only am I street smart, but I'm also book smart. Okay, so take 17 monkeys who can write Shakespeare and remove their ability to write Shakespeare. I'm pretty sure a chimp would be a better director. I told him that if we're going to keep the Barbra Streisand scene... It was, also, it, it, was, it was a good time dealing with someone who knew what was going on, how to do something, what the genius was all about. I'm walking. Loved it. It was great. The longest thing of the whole process was he didn't know what, whether he wanted the script on Golden Rod or salmon. I said, Mike, you better put forward one million. That's not even possible because there's no percent higher than a hundred, but for some reason I'm just that good. Like, I am like really the best filmmaker there is on the face of this planet. Just it was a phenomenal feeling that I affected somebody like this. So I call up Mike on the phone, I'm like, Mike, what do you want the character to be like? And he says, what you need to do is watch Angels in the Outfield and be exactly like Tony Danza. So after the premiere, um, the critics only praised the film. They can only praise it so much because it goes up to five stars. After the premiere, Mike asked me, how'd you like the film? I was so angry, I rolled up my sleeves, clenched my fists, and scuffed his shoes. I walked away triumphantly. If I'm gonna make a movie that is gonna be the best damn thing this country, how this world has ever seen... It got to the point where I just asked them not to put my name in the credits. So I went around and I asked them, hey, you see the movie, what'd you think? And these were the type of responses I got. Get the hell out of my store! What the fuck was that? Dude. Serious. What the hell are you doing in my house? What? Ah!
ba 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 Went to a dance looking for romance. romance. Saw a barber and then I thought I'd take a chance. Barber and Baba, 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 Got me rocking and a rolling, rocking and a reeling. Baba ran, Baba, Baba ran. Additional verse that wasn't rehearsed. Baba ran.